The Sonnets by William Shakespeare. Part three. Sonnets twenty one to thirty. Twenty one. So is it not with me as with that muse, stirred by a painted beauty to his verse, who heaven itself for ornament doth use, and every fair with his fair doth rehearse, making a couplement of proud compare with sun and moon, with earth and seas rich gems, with April's first-born flowers, and all things rare, that heaven's air in this huge rondure hems. O oh, let me, true in love, but truly right, and then believe me, my love is as fair as any mother's child, though not so bright as those gold candles fixed in heaven's air. Let them say more that like of hearsay well, I will not praise that purpose not to sell. 22. My glass shall not persuade me I am old, so long as youth and thou are of one date. But when in thee time's furrows I behold, then look I death my days should expiate. For all that beauty that doth cover thee, is but the seemly raiment of my heart, which in thy breast doth live as thine in me. How can I then be elder than thou art? Oh, therefore, love, be of thyself so wary, as I, not for myself, but for thee will, bearing thy heart which I will keep so chary, as tender nurse her babe from faring ill. Presume not on thy heart when mine is slain, thou gavest me thine not to give back again. 23. As an unperfect actor on the stage, who with his fear is put beside his part, or some fierce thing replete with too much rage, whose strength's abundance weakens his own heart. So I, for fear of trust, forget to say the perfect ceremony of love's right, and in mine own love's strength seem to decay, or charged with burden of mine own love's might. O oh, let my looks be then the eloquence and dumb presagers of my speaking breast, who plead for love and look for recompense, more than that tongue that more hath more expressed. O oh, learn to read what silent love hath writ, to hear with eyes belongs to love's fine wit. 24. Mine eye hath played the painter, and hath stelled thy beauty's form in table of my heart. My body is the frame wherein tis held, and perspective it is best painter's art. For through the painter must you see his skill, to find where your true image pictured lies, which in my bosom's shop is hanging still, that hath his windows glazed with thine eyes. Now see what good turns eyes for eyes have done, mine eyes have drawn thy shape, and thine for me are windows to my breast, where through the sun delights to peep to gaze therein on thee. Yet eyes this cunning want to grace their art, they draw but what they see, know not the heart. 25. Let those who are in favour with their stars, of public honour and proud titles boast, whilst I, whom fortune of such triumph bars, unlooked for joy in that I honour most. Great princes' favourites their fair leaves spread, but as the marigold at the sun's eye, and in themselves their pride lies buried, for at a frown they in their glory die. The painful warrior famous for fight, after a thousand victories once foiled, is from the book of honour raised quite, and all the rest forgot for which he toiled. Then happy I, that love and am beloved, where I may not remove, nor be removed. 26. Lord of my love, to whom in vassalage thy merit hath my duty strongly knit, to thee I send this written embassage, to witness duty, not to show my wit. Duty so great which wit so poor as mine may make seem bare, in wanting words to show it, but that I hope some good conceit of thine and thy soul's thought, all naked will bestow it. 
till whatsoever star that guides my moving points on me graciously with fair aspect, and puts a peril on my tattered loving, to show me worthy of thy sweet respect. Then may I dare to boast how I do love thee, till then not show my head where thou mayst prove me. 27. Weary with toil, I haste me to my bed, the dear repose for limbs with travel tired, but then begins a journey in my head, to work my mind when body's works expired. For then my thoughts, from far where I abide, intend a zealous pilgrimage to thee, and keep my drooping eyelids open wide, looking on darkness which the blind do see. Save that my soul's imaginary sight presents thy shadow to my sightless view, which, like a jewel, hung in ghastly night, makes black night beauteous, and her old face new. Lo! thus by day my limbs, by night my mind, for thee and for myself no quiet find. 28. How can I then return in happy plight, that am debarred the benefit of rest? When day's oppression is not eased by night, but day by night and night by day oppressed, and each, though enemies to either's reign, do in consent shake hands to torture me, the one by toil, the other to complain how far I toil, still farther off from thee. I tell the day, to please him thou art bright, and dost him grace when clouds do blot the heaven. So flatter I the swart complexioned night, when sparkling stars twire not thou gilds the even. But day doth daily draw my sorrows longer, and night doth nightly make grief's length seem stronger. 29. When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope, with what I most enjoy contented least. Yet in these thoughts myself almost despising, haply I think on thee, and then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising from sullen earth, sings hymns at heaven's gate. For thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. 30. When to the sessions of sweet silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past, I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes new wail my dear time's waste. Then can I drown an eye, unused to flow, for precious friends hid in death's dateless night, and weep afresh love's long since cancelled woe, and moan the expense of many a vanished sight. Then can I grieve at grievances forgone, and heavily from woe to woe tell o'er the sad account of four bemoaned moan, which I knew pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored, and sorrows end. End of part three